Hello everyone, this is user1 and we are playing some LSRP uh, well this is a, a little bit different actually because this is not actually a live recording I'm actually commentating but as you can see I have sort of uh, well basically I approached the members that were in my uh, neighborhood in which I bought the house in doing the live stream and we kinda made friends very quickly so now we are being like challenged by the by this group of people. Uh, they just pulled up in a white uh, photo and started waving guns around. So I thought that it would escalate into a shootout, and that's a good thing because I already had a gun. But I didn't want to, you know, escalate the situation so quickly because I know that uh, if you escalate it quickly, it's gonna, uh, you know. See, I'm approaching the pole right now. This is me trying to take cover. It's uh, one thing I noticed. Well, while I'm commentating this uh, note live is that I don't, I don't have to focus on the situation I can just analyze what I'm doing and I think that this is actually a little better this takes a lot uh, more effort to do than the usual recording so uh, and the downside is you don't see my immediate reaction which is of course unfortunate you know <laughs> I know how you guys want to see my immediate reaction but hey um, I also don't have a face cam in this one I guess uh, I forgot to turn it on. To be honest, I don't know why I didn't have a face cam. Uh, if you if you want me to, I will turn it on next time. You know, <laughs> I don't know if you want me to do these kind of episodes, but uh, yeah, that's why that's why there's a comment section, and I want to see. So as you can see, Quinn is talking to uh, Kishon Hawk, uh, and as you can see, I'm all playing being nervous and stuff because I don't know how this shootout's gonna go down. You know. Yeah, so you can see they've been waving guns around, at least they roleplayed doing so. So now they're getting out, uh, it's about to start going, and they're gonna start hitting us, there you go, okay. So now I didn't want to get confused, so I just went for the driver, because I knew for sure, and I, I, just, I was just punching anyone who would punch me, and I knew a few people from the, uh, well, the neighborhood that I just met, but... Uh, I just wanted to be sure, so I just kept punching the driver throughout the whole thing. And it was a little bit laggy, I still had my boxing style from Amy Mendoza, so I think I, I, I did pretty well. Uh, yeah, and uh, I think I had some drug addiction left over, so <laughs> I had a, a massive health advantage as well. Uh, so yeah, that, 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 I was really glad that this did not escalate to a gunfight, because that would escalate pretty quickly. Uh, as you can see, he's already starting to drop be below uh, 100 HP, as you can see his health bar. The health bar only represents up to 100 HP, and it's possible to have more than 100 HP. In fact, most uh, players have 150, which is what you get when you upgrade. Uh, and you can have even more than that, up to 250 if you use drugs. And you also can have armor, but you, you see armor then. I'll still sub to you if you lose, I only now noticed that, that's pretty funny. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, as you can see, I, I I was so immersed, I was not even paying attention. So when I'm roleplaying like this, it's really easy to get immersed myself when I'm not commenting consistently, because commentation com comments are out of character, really. So we got another another uh, group coming up here, and after the last one, I felt a little, you know, scared because I didn't want to uh, get into another fight. I didn't want to, you know, and if it escalates to a shootout, it's a really dangerous situation. So I, you know, they were like, homie come closer, one question. So I was like, oh shit, they're gonna fucking shoot him up. And I see Kishon approaching now. So I back up a little bit, up to the pole, because, you know, I want to I be careful. <laughs> and this is Montel. He he went out before I started recording. We met together, they were playing dice. Um, and he he uh, jokes about his fat. He's a uh, role plays a 14 year old and he has a bag of Cheetos, you can see that. But yeah, he missed the fight, unfortunately. Uh, so yeah, he, he's me explaining that uh, <laughs> while he was eating, we he missed the fight. Uh, so yeah, turns out these guys in the purple car they only want cocaine. A lot of people pull up and they want cocaine. Very very interesting, really. Uh, a lot of people want to bring their health above uh, 200, uh, 200 really. Uh, so yeah, this is Clay. Clay is uh, the kind of the boss. Everyone calls me, calling him like Big Clay and stuff. And apparently he supplies the whole squad, I suppose. <laughs> Guys, chips roleplay. <laughs> chips, chips roleplay, okay? 
<laughs> okay, so the, I see the I see the purple thing pull up again, and I get you know, I I I twitch a little bit because I don't know what they're gonna do. Some you, you can see you can see that I, I even stopped typing my me for a moment, <laughs> slashed it uh, in half. So this is not a shot. This is because my health is just fucking ticking away after I took ecstasy and cocaine in the live stream, uh, and I just decided to fucking get it sorted. So they're gonna give me. 12 uh, Halo Palo just to contradict the fucking addiction because the addiction is ridiculous man the addiction is ridiculous it took me 21 and uh, uh, fucking 0.5 HP just and the moment I took consume more cocaine the next moment it would just go back to addiction immediately and I would lose more health it just it's just ridiculous man and I, I don't want to perpetuate into the cycle and there's a lot more issues to uh, drug consumption so if I want, I, I I will still probably roleplay some kind of drug addiction. I will not just actually consume the drugs probably because the the way the addiction is handled is ridiculous in my opinion. The way it's handled is a little bit ridiculous. Um, I have no idea how they predicted that. As you can see, I literally go blind at that point. <laughs> and I type, I'm blind. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, thankfully I am given the prescription drugs and. I am able to, uh, you know, because the issue is drugs don't make you blind inside the interiors. They make you dizzy, they make you do all that and that, but holy shit, they don't make you blind. As you can see, I use the drug immediately as I get it because I, I just want to be able to see again and I have to use it immediately again because I'm still blind and there we go. <laughs> a little ridiculous, just saying, a little ridiculous. So yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's a thing. And as you can see, I got addiction immediately again, just immediately, and it went to this effect that didn't make me blind inside the interior, so I didn't really mind. Uh, as you can see, yeah, I was actually really satisfied with uh, All Saints General. Okay, so then I went back to the hood. I'm sorry, my uh, recorder crashed, so I have to redo it. Anyway, so I'm back with Clay, and we're talking, you know, uh, and I tell him. You know, I, I, I talked to the boys and the boys told me, hey, you need a job, talk to Clay. Because I didn't need a job. I was an 18 year old who lived alone and had no idea how to make more money. You know, he lived with his mom before he had... Uh, so, okay, I, I can't talk, I'm sorry. Uh, anyway, so I went ahead and uh, talked to Clay because a lot of people suggested uh, me talk to him because he would give me a job, presumably. And just uh, just watch what happens, really. Uh, so, as you can see, uh, Thomas approaches and he's like, "Hey, uh, you wanna? Y I wanna buy some guns." And he's like, "Oh shit! You, your your BD doesn't provide for you, and BD is like their neighborhood, their uh, you know shit." So I was like, "Okay." Uh, okay, I'll provide. I'll, I'll sell my gun for a ridiculous price because that's how economics works. As you'll see in a second. I offer him a gun for uh, 30 grand, uh, which I, I don't really care about. <laughs> I don't really care about that money, but I just wanted to make it look realistic, make it look like I care. Then this guy approaches back, he's like, yo, 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 where, where are we gonna do it? Where are we gonna do it? Where are we gonna fucking. I wanna buy that gun off of you, yeah, okay. Where are we gonna do it? So, he's like... Uh, yeah, let's do it in the alleyway behind... Uh, where should we do it? Where is it not too much public? And he, I tell him, behind his uh, back there's an alleyway, he's like, not too public, and I tell him behind Gundam Gym, and he also says that's not that's too public, and I tell him, you know what? Fucking make up your mind, you wanna buy the gun, you gotta take some risks, okay? I'm not taking you home. So yeah, he decides, okay, fine, let's do the deal behind this behind this alley, in this alleyway, so okay, and I tell him pass me the moolah, pass me the money, I want I want the money first, because you know how it goes, you want the money first, and I of course I'm going to give him the gun, I wasn't going to scam him, because I don't want to disappoint Clay, I don't want to create beef between BD and uh, Crystal Gardens, he goes inside, he grabs the gun, and he doesn't get out, he just sticks there, he just, you know, I don't know what's happening in my neighborhood, you know, some shit is going down in my neighborhood right now, and I have no idea, because this guy decides to stick around and uh, 
do very in-depth roleplay of opening the glow box and taking the gun out. I mean, I don't blame him, but there's a lot of stuff going on. You, if you want to do stuff like this, you gotta, you know, you come prepared. And this guy just decides to ram through. I don't know why he did that. Because th there's no one pursuing him, and then he stops at the gym. I don't know why he just rammed me, but whatever. So yeah, we, we done. I uh, tell him to get going, because I don't want to get robbed or nothing, and I want to check out my neighborhood. So yeah. I drive off and look what happens. Just look. There's just this... So when I come back, I see all this beef going on. It's just ridiculous. So I park my car and I'm like, okay, I need to help out my neighborhood. See the police pull up and they drive off immediately because they don't want to get involved with it. They're too scared. So I'm like, okay, we got, we got ourselves another brawl. You know, we don't want to fucking do shit crazy. And... Guns get brought up again, but I, I'm like, okay, it's just gonna be a brawl, just like last time. Guns were brought up again, uh, but uh, they weren't like brought up. Uh, they were brought up the first time as well, but they weren't used. They were just waved around. So we got a piece aimed at Joseph's back. I'm not so sure who Joseph is. And shooting starts. Everyone's getting shot. Everyone is running, and immediately everyone scatters. You see what happens during shootouts, and I get shot in the ass right here. You can see, I got shot in the ass, I kept running because fucking, I got shot in the ass, I don't want to fucking stop running. Anyway, I keep running, and I was shot, and I, I wasn't sure at the time that I was shot because things just happened so quickly, and I decided to check my damage just, just, just to make sure that I was shot. You know, I always do this after shootout, you, you should also do this. And then I start roleplaying once I, I know that adrenaline would start wearing off, and I know that, you know, fucking I got shot. <laughs> Man, that that was that that situation was really really intense. Uh, but hey, you see, when uh, shootouts get brought up instead of brawls, uh, things escalate way too quickly, and you know, roleplay doesn't last very long, and it just grows into medical roleplay if people even bother with that. So yeah, as you can see, I start pulling myself up because, um, believe it or not, one gunshot to the ass does not actually make you completely uh, dead <laughs> immediately. So you can see Thomas is doing the right thing here. I really enjoy when people value life. I really enjoy when people value life like this. And uh, yeah, it's really nice of him to take me to the hospital like this. Uh, as you can see, he drives me all the way to All, uh, all Saints General Hospital. We don't actually find any. Uh, so here I'm walking back to Thomas's car. He's gonna drive me back to the hood after we role played. I can't see you in two weeks, as you can see in the top there. Uh, and I crash immediately. <laughs> Gonna love that. This is way too high, you need to cut it! Okay, now we're back and I'm gonna go back to Thomas right here. He's gonna give me a ride back home and see what happens. So Fernando Colinas on his Fagio says BDK and this is the annoying bit because he has a shotgun in his hand. He doesn't show it in any way but then he runs up and starts shooting at us. <laughs> Which is extremely annoying. Also, he doesn't kill us, which is hilarious as well. <laughs> and also ironic that I just got out of the hospital from gunshot wounds and immediately we get into another fucking shootout. It's just ridiculous, man. I, I just wanted to get back to the hood. So, this is ridiculous. This is just getting ridiculous. As you can see, the situation still escalated. There's a bunch of dead people still from the shootout. And look what happens. See this guy on the fucking rooftop with a helmet? Look at him. He just starts fucking... Firing at the officers immediately. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm just like, I'm in disbelief. Like, dude, are you fucking kidding me? And he immediately dies as well. Yeah, that's the hood, man. That's the hood life. <laughs> Alright, thanks for the lecture. <laughs> I learned more than in high school. <laughs> oh, man. I really enjoyed this. I, I cannot say that I didn't enjoy this. This was really nice. A little, you know, step back into pure roleplay. And I really enjoyed it. So thank you all so much for watching, uh, tell me if you enjoyed this as well, and stay awesome.